Welcome to Art Typical, the show about atypical art. My name is McCain and I'll be your host today. Together with my two co-hosts, Maria and Sunna, we'll dive deeper into the world of art. Maria, what do you consider art? I think art can be found in various places, but particularly in theater. You know, I love seeing live performances and actors give their all on stage. And do you think food is art as well? Oh, definitely. You know, there's this quote by Pablo Picasso, art washes away from the soul, the dust of everyday lives. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of it? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> well, he implies that art is the food for the soul, which keeps it healthy. Okay, I like it. Picasso. <laughs> But uh, yeah, nothing makes me happier than when my dad is cooking in the kitchen and the smell of food fills up the house. Which reminds me, our co-host Sunna is currently in our kitchen corner preparing lunch. Sunna, how is the food turning out? Well, I mean, it's something, I guess. I'm really trying my best over here. However, you guys are in for a real treat because the head chef at Holy Moly will show us what real art on a plate looks like. Let's take a look. In the middle of the city center of Breda, one can find a magical place, Holy Moly. By daytime, Holy Moly is a restaurant with food and entertainment, but at night, the restaurant changes into a club. Holy Moly makes sure to offer an experience you will never forget. This is Anouk. She is the head chef of Holy Moly, and together with her team, she makes sure that the food served is a work of art. For me, it's important to do something that you really love to do, and if you do something you don't love, you are really unhappy. And I didn't want to be unhappy, so I just changed. Holy Moly is like a wonderful place to work. It's like something magical when you come into uh, Holy Moly. People have like an experience with the food, with the music, with like everything. Yeah, the main view of Holy Moly is street food meets fine dining. So we're also working with some magical things like uh, dry ice with smoke at the table. So when people have a dish, it's also something magical. Everything's together make it something magical. One thing Anouk loves about cooking is that there are no rules. I like a lot about food. You can go really different ways. Uh, you have so many kitchens uh, like Asian, like Dutch, French cuisine. So a lot of flavors, a lot of tools to work with. Every day is different, and that's something special about uh, business. And most importantly, she's able to put love into the dishes she makes. I put some love in the dish. That's also really important, and it's not... I cannot explain how you do it, but yeah. Together with the other chefs, she tries out new dishes to put on the menu. In the kitchen, it's like uh, trying all the time, and if it's good, you can make more. But sometimes it's scary, and not always turn out really good. So if it looks really good on the plate, but the flavor is... The dish is not complete. All the dishes are created with the intention of providing a new experience. We are proud of the Magic Garden because it's like also a vegan dish and you have a lot of structures on it, like something crunchy. Uh, we also have like uh, stones, candy stones. The dish looks like a garden with a lot of herbs and we also serve it with the dry ice with the smoke. So that's also a sort of signature dish from Holy Moly. One of the unique things about Holy Moly is that they make dishes where street food meets fine dining. Yeah, also street food is uh, like uh, something you eat fast. And when you come to eat here, you have an evening out, so you just want to chill, relax. And I think that's the difference. Together with Holy Moly, Anouk provides food that inspires. Team spirit is really good. We are all team players. Everybody helps each other. We have respect for each other. The team is really great. Everybody is really comfortable uh, when they are working. Food is art for the soul. Uh, also, people are becoming really happy when they eat and also when they eat good food. I would say good food is good mood. So, uh, yeah, I think it's really art. Also, if you see a really nice plate and the flavors are also really uh, strong and really cool, uh, people become happy by eating it. And for anyone that wants to follow the footsteps of Anouk, she has one last message to share with you. Uh, be who you are, do what you love, put love in the dishes, follow your dreams, just do what you want. If you really want to be a chef, then work hard for it and it will come to you. Thank you Anouk and everyone at Holy Moly for showcasing what art on the plate is. And now, back to the studio. Oh, seeing all of this delicious food definitely made me hungry. <laughs> yeah, me too. I really hated how much time I spent in the kitchen 
compared to how quickly the food is gone, quite often we don't see the artist right in front of us, you know? Exactly. And speaking about seeing, have you ever thought about the fact that usually the first thing people notice about you are your eyes? Oh yeah, that's true. But only if you're comfortable with eye contact, uh, eye contact, because not everybody is. But also, the color of your eye can add a lot to your appearance. Yeah, irises were classified into one of seven colors, with the most common ones being brown and blue. But we can also be born with rare eye colors like red. And of course, there are subcategories like hazel, cobalt, teal and more. Did you know that there's also a special form of art that focuses just on your iris? We met up with an iris photographer with whom I had a great opportunity to see a close-up of my eyes. Let's see. Erkan Piener is a 44-year-old artist from Rosendahl. He's a Boas alumnus graduating with a degree in tourism. It was when COVID hit that he had to change the focus of his career and reinvent himself. And that's how he found iris photography. Well, actually, I was... Uh I saw some pictures and I was once in Germany and uh, I saw a little shop who was, uh, was doing that and I was like very interested in it. But it was always in my mind, but my main uh, profession was, uh, you know, like tourism. So I never thought about it till uh, COVID came and then I just started with it without thinking, without hesitating. Uh, the process of making a photo of the iris has a lot of uh, steps actually. It's a, it's a very, you know, like a delicate process and if you really do that well, then people are uh, satisfied. But it takes of making a picture very close by in a very big display so that you can really make a good print out of it because uh, it's a very small eye. Then editing it in uh, Adobe, you know, Adobe Photoshop to make an illustration out of it, or, or single, or like a, you know, like a collision. What an iris photo photography makes special is um, the story of the, of the people who who want to do it actually, for whatever reason, or they are madly in love when uh, Valentine's Day comes on 14th of February. Then you see a lot of people making appointments uh, just to surprise their loved ones. And some stories are very like heartbreaking. Uh, like someone's saying, um, at this moment I cannot speak, uh, I can only write. Uh, he says, I, uh, I really have a couple of weeks left and I want to give my daughter a uh, uh, something like memories of me, you know, and, and and my eye is also a part of that. And and if you hear that, then it really makes, uh, you really think about life, you know, and uh, families who are lo losing their husband because of a tumor are coming here. So you also have to do with that more and more because it's, like the eye is something unique of that person. Uh, it, is, it, it is really like your father or your mother's eye and uh, it, it has a deep value for a, uh, for a lot of people. Uh, even if you see the father and the mother looking at the child of their eyes, like, oh, they got my color or they got my structure, you know? Uh, it, has, it, it always has a very beautiful story. And, I think it's all about love. Art can be as small as your iris, but also the size of a tree. For thousands of years, humankind has been creating various art forms. One of these historic art forms is wood sculpting, with the oldest wood sculpture being 12,500 years old. Amazing, right? And did you know that the oldest type of trees, the great bristle cones, can surpass us more than 50 times in age, reaching an age of 5,000 years old? It's incredible that something can reach that age. Indeed. And did you also know that the Guinness World Record for the longest wooden sculpture is 23 meters long? Really? That's yeah. like the length of a tennis court. To gain more insight on how this craft work, we'll be introducing you to someone who's been creating wooden sculpture for 22 years. Let's have a look. Today we are visiting Zuilen in Breda. This is one of the biggest funeral homes in the Netherlands. 
You might think, what makes this graveyard unique? Well, let me tell you. On this graveyard you can find multiple types of art created by multiple types of artists. Today we will introduce to you the talented wood artist Hans Nijmeijer. Ik ben Hans Nijmeijer en ik ben uh, ja, kunstenaar, wat het noemt, maar ik zie het meer als vormgever van sculpturen, maar ook uh, objecten buiten ruimtes. The tree you see here was dying and therefore was going to be cut down. Zuilen reached out to Hans and he saw the opportunity to make a beautiful artwork out of it. Ja, het idee achter de handen is eigenlijk uh, het, het loslaten. Ik probeer de handen ook een hele subtiele uh, aanraking te geven, zeg maar. Uh, want ja, iedereen gaat uiteindelijk dood. Dus ja, proberen los te laten, zeg maar. Misschien nog wel iets van helpende hand elkaar. Uh, blijven herinneren, blijven ja, geestelijk blijven vasthouden. Maar heel losjes, heel subtiel. Roel Stapper has been the director of Zuilen sinds 2008. With a lot of passion and commitment, he takes on the important task of deciding which artworks are located on the graveyard. Nee, zo ben ik met uh, Hans Nijmeijer in contact gekomen omdat ja, zijn werk uh, uh, echt, echt iets in je raakt. En de variëteit die hij doet, maar vooral ook dat, het, dat hij een soort toegepaste kunst maakt. Dus je kunt hem vragen om iets te ontwikkelen en hij geeft daar zijn eigen draai aan. Dus, en dan wordt het echt kunst, maar hij... Hij kan zeg maar die symboliek die wij willen, kan hij heel mooi verbeelden en daar is hij op dit moment mee bezig met die, met die moerassiepres van bijna vijf meter hoog. Roel places great value to the art in and around the cemetery park. Daar kun je weer zeggen van dat het heel fijn is als mensen een stukje erkenning en herkenning vinden en ook dat perspectief waar ik het net over had, dat zien we al. Ik ben niet de enige die dit verlies heeft verleden, er zijn er meer, er zijn mensen die blijkens de kunst snappen wat ik nu doormaak en die me daardoor door die herkenning helpen. Every day Zuilen has a lot of visitors, but sometimes a visit can have an extra special meaning for someone. De eerste dag dat ik begon was ik met de boom bezig en op een gegeven moment kwam er een oude mevrouw bij mij staan en vroeg wat ik ja, van plan was met die boom. Ik zei, nou, ik ga er een beeld van maken van twee handen, dus ik liet haar de tekening zien. En ze was een tijdje stil en ze kijkt me aan en ze zegt van ja, want ik heb dit, het graf van mijn man hier uitgezocht, speciaal bij die boom. Eh, omdat ik die boom zo mooi vond, maar die werd weggehaald. En ze zegt maar, ik ben op dit moment een schilderij aan het maken. Eh, van een hand die uit de hemel komt, mijn man. En een hand die vanaf de aarde naar hem uitstrekt. En ik had echt zoiets van nee, dit kan niet. After three weeks of hard work, the wood sculpture of Hans has finally been completed. In between other creations like the Van Gogh Garden and the Sisters Tree, the two hands have their own special place at the Van Zuilen graveyard. Both Hans and Roel are satisfied with the final result and would love to work together again in the future. Oh, would you look at that? We've seen it all in this show. We've been showing you various art forms, but now we'd like to show you the art of our subconsciousness. I recently got some more experience regarding this. Join me in the magical world of illusion. Today we're in Merchten, Belgium, and we're about to meet a very special man to introduce us to the world of hypnosis. I'm uh, Patrick, Patrick Picard, and I'm a hypnotist from Belgium. I think it was my grand grandfather that uh, inspired me. I heard when I was a little kid I I did a lot of uh, magic tricks and my grandmother told always about her father and he could also do some magic but he also could hypnotize people. And I think those stories they intrigued me and then I started to read a book uh, and now I have about 1500 books about the topic. In the beginning I didn't dare to tell it to my parents, so I was a little bit afraid how they would react. But, uh, but once that I got my degree in hypnotherapy and I told them, then wow, great. Then, because I was also a little bit afraid that they want to challenge me. I'm quite a shy person, maybe you wouldn't say that, but during 15 years I only read about uh, hypnosis. I, d I didn't dare to, to exercise it because you need to approach people, look into their eyes and so on. 
since the beginning of, of humanity, I think people are intrigued by what is uh, the, what people don't understand. So the, the supernatural things, uh, magic tricks, uh, optical illusions, they always, uh, especially kids, uh, but also of course uh, adults, people make concentrate on an image, but that's real, that it becomes real for the mind. En ga maar lekker verdiepen, weer op voor wat En ga maar lekker diep en ontspannen. En alle gesloten en ontspannen. En gewoon je zalen. Eventjes je hoofd aanraken. Je kunt je zalen opzijde. Voilà. En dan nog een beetje naar boven. En ga je naar die nodige mensen. Voilà. Eentje die wakker. En slaap. En slaap. Ja. En slaap. En slaap. En dan weer de focus. En dan gaan we ontspannen. En dan ontspannen. Eentje die wakker. En slaap. Eentje die wakker. En slaap. En je ziet, ze zijn nog altijd bij hè? en toch reageert er onder bewustzijn gewoon. Het is zo raar. Het is zo raar. Can you explain how that works? Or... Yeah, we ask the, the people to relax because the better we are relaxed, the better it will work. And then we start to ask to focus on a certain image. I will describe the image and if you can focus really well on that image, then at a certain point the brain would think that is real and will act like it is real. The most famous and I think the most visible trick is to put somebody stiff as a board between two chairs. It's also my logo. Uh, I have it also here in my museum in uh, different ways uh, presented. I also do photo works with it about it because it makes it very visual what the mind and the body, how they can uh, uh, I would say collaborate uh, and, and it de depends on, on each other. Ah, my plans are uh, to make, uh, to link hypnosis and, and, and uh, more to the world of art. Uh, you have the classical shows uh, that everybody knows, you have the therapy uh, that uh, where people are helped with hypnosis. But I think there's a, a way to present and to, I would say, to make hypnosis discussable by, of, uh, by uh, artworks. So I'm now focusing also on that. I also developed a game about hypnosis. So I'm looking always to find new ways that people talk about hypnosis. This must have been quite the experience. How does it feel to be hypnotized? Well, it's actually really amazing because you're aware and awake and you know everything that you're doing, but you just don't have the control over your body or your mind. And it's really something I've never done before. Nothing like it. Uh -huh. And do you believe that the skepticism around hypnosis is justified or has the experience changed your mind? Um, well, I wasn't too skeptical at first, but I mean, you never know how real hypnosis is when you look on TV or in mm -hmm. a show or something. Uh, but this has really justified that it is real. And I mean, I would say to you, just try it out yourself as well. Well, that sounds very interesting, but let's find out if it's really real or what. No, not. no, no, that's not the time Sleep. for that. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> um, the word art has a broader definition than we often first assume. We hope we've given you the inspiration to think outside of the box and we want to thank you for joining in with us. And who knows, maybe you can create the next atypical art.